Okay, I mean, unfortunately I'm sick today, but you do need to continue on with your analysis of the Mozart concerto. So hopefully this little video is going to talk about the third movement. We're looking at form and modulation in the third movement of our concerto. So what we know so far about form. There are two main forms that we're kind of working with. We're working with sonata form for the exposition, develop, recapitulation, and then often on the end, we'd stick a coda as well. And we're working with rondo form which is A, B, A, C, A. Remember that these A's are called refrains. Refrains, sorry, R, A, I, N, S. And the B and C's are called episodes. So the refrains kind of remain consistent, and then B and C is where you get the different melodic material or a different key. We have a look at quickly the tonal plan, so how the modulations get mapped out. In sonata form, we have our exposition, a development, a real cap. Then we've got our theme one and theme two introduced, the first in the tonic and then the second in the dominant or the relative. Then in your development, either theme one or two are introduced and maybe a new theme is introduced. And there's a lot of modulation that occurs in that middle section. And then finally, you have your recapitulation, which should be all in the tonic. Then you also have rondo form. So we have A, where our first theme is introduced, the first refrain within the tonic, then B in the dominant or related key, then A returns pretty much exactly the same as how we see it in the beginning, and then C with a new theme, and then A returns again. So Mozart, the master of form and the master of concerto writing, Mozart combines these into what we call sonata rondo form, or A, B, A, C, and then A. So A, B, A serves as kind of like the exposition, a C serves as the development, and then the final A kind of acts as a recapitulation, and then there's a little coda on the end. It seems a little confusing to start with, but we're going to have a look at it, how it looks like in our Mozart concerto. So here's a little table, kind of similar to what you've got in your first movement study guide, with all the bar numbers and everything lined out. I will print a score for you with bar numbers on it, um, but it has been written on a computer, so don't trust it 100% with all the correct markings. Uh, so the Mozart Clarinet Concerto, we can see at the start, at the top, you've kind of got your sonata form layout, so exposition, development, recapitulation, and coda. And then underneath, how we manage to fit a rondo form into that. So we start with A, B, A. So A, the first episode, has that kind of quite jolly theme to it. And then at bar 53, we have our B section. And then A returns back in the tonic key, just like our rondo form, where you go A, B, A, tonic, dominant, tonic. We do the same thing in the Mozart concerto, A, B, A, tonic, eventually getting to the dominant, and then back to the tonic again. Then at bar 138, you have something vastly different. We appear in the, in the key of F sharp minor, which of course is the relative to A, so the sixth, and we have our new melodic material. So we kind of call this the development section, uh, if you want to refer to it in sonata form, but because it's a brand new section with brand new material as well, we can give it the label C, just like we would in rondo form with C. So something that's closely related, often in the minor key. Hey, look, we're in the minor key. And we go through a series of modulations to try and get back to the tonic, just as we would in a classical development. And then finally, at bar 247, we arrive back in A major, and that's you should be able to hear when that melody returns. And again, in our tonic, without A. It follows both the rondo form, A, B, A, C, A, and also each section kind of falls under the exposition development recap as well. So we can see how Mozart kind of blends these two together to create a bit more of a structured concerto at the end. Have a go at finding these spots in your score and marking out the modulations as well. All your bar numbers are there. You might have to do lots and lots of counting. Um, and I'll stick up a score with bar numbers in it onto your connect. And then if you do want to print it out, uh, think, I think Ms. Felipe might be in your class in the office during your class time. So just pop your head in and she'll be able to print it out for you as well or print it off of the computers in the lab. Hopefully you have a good day. If any of this doesn't make sense, send me an email and we'll try and make sense of it when I get back to school. See ya.